Welcome back. This is the final lesson of week 15. We've been learning about recursion and in this lesson I'll show you how to turn a recursive function back into an ordinary iterative function. In this lesson we'll write a short recursive function, look at the checklist to convert recursion into iteration and use our recursive function as a worked example as we convert it to a function with a while loop. And I'll leave you with a task to do yourself. Just a reminder that anything that can be done with recursion can be done with iteration and we can convert in either direction. In this lesson, we'll turn recursion into iteration. So, See if you can write a recursive function using everything that you've learned this week. Write a recursive function that makes a list of all the odd numbers entered by the user. So we'll start with an empty list. The user will enter numbers one after the other. And if the number is odd, it will be added to the list. And then think of a base case. For instance, if the user enters zero, it will stop the function and return the list of odd numbers to the main program and in the main program print out the result. So you've got you've definitely got all the skills you need to write this function. So obviously I'm going to show it you on the next screen, but see if you can do do it now, because if you can, that shows you you've really understood how recursion works. I'm just giving you a chance to pause the video and do that now. So here is a recursive function which will print out a list of all the odd numbers entered by the user. And it's called from the main program. If you haven't written this yet, simply copy this function now. So hopefully you've written that function because we're going to go through this checklist now to convert that recursive function into an iterative function. The checklist, we've got to do four things. We've got to make sure that the function does not call itself. I mean, that will stop it being a recursive function. We've got to look for the base case and turn that into the exit condition of a while loop. We've got to put all the remaining commands inside that loop. And we have just check the use of parameters because iterative functions don't always need parameters. So it's worth taking a look at that. So those, those are, that's our checklist. We're going to go through those four steps. So the first thing I'm going to do, here's the function that I showed you before and hopefully the one you've got on your screen. We're going to go through the four steps. Our finished function won't work properly until we've done all four steps. So let's start with step one. The function is not supposed to call itself because we don't want it to be a recursive function. That's the line where it calls itself. So we'll change that so that it simply returns a value rather than calling itself. So there we are. Now it returns the list. It doesn't call itself. The second thing we need to do is to change the base case to make it into a while loop. The base case is when the user enters the number zero. In that case, the iteration, the recursion will stop. We need to change that to the exit condition of a while loop. We've reversed the logic. So the base case was if the number equals zero, the while loop is if the number doesn't equal zero because the test in the while loop makes the loop continue. Next, I've put all the commands inside the loop. So I've just basically indented them all so that they go inside the loop. I've had to repeat a line as well, the uh, input of the number. And finally, do I need a parameter? When my function was recursive, I was using a parameter to pass the list along. And in the main program, I had to call my function with that parameter. 
in the first instance an empty list. Now that it's an iterative function, I don't need that parameter. I'm setting up the empty list inside the function. I don't need to pass it as a parameter. And the main program has become a bit simpler. So you can see there are two ways of doing the same task, one with iteration and one with recursion. Both ways have got some advantages and some disadvantages, but the finished result is exactly the same. So here's a checklist for converting a recursive function into an iterative function that uses a loop. Number one, make sure that the function does not call itself. Secondly, change the base case into the first line of a while loop. Put the other commands inside that loop and think about whether you need parameters or not. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. So I'm going to leave you with a similar task. Here's a function that uses recursion. Convert it so that it uses iteration instead and write the main program that will call this function. If you're one of my students, I've left you with a series of exercises for converting backwards and forwards between recursion and iteration. So have a go at those tasks and upload them to the VLE so that I can mark them. All right, so that's the end of this week's lessons on recursion. See you next week. Bye for now.